Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the Hawk Panorama Scope on test, but before that, I'm out on my rabbiting rounds in the pony paddocks. I'm out after a few rabbits this evening. Now, these fields are kept as pony paddocks and the last thing you want is rabbits burrowing because if a horse puts its hoof down a hole, it could cause a seriously nasty accident. We've got about an hour of daylight left, which should mean the rabbits are just about to emerge out for their evening feed. So we'll give it a try and see if we can get a few. I actually spooked a few rabbits in along the hedgerow here as I approached then, so it seems like quite a good place to set up. Also, the slope of the hill here flattens off into quite a flat terrace, so it means I got relatively horizontal shots at the rabbits when they come out. So I'm gonna set up here about 25, 30 meters from the hedge and pick them off using the bipod. Right, you'll see I've put the scope camera on tonight. Now, to be honest with you, I'd much rather be looking through the glass than looking at a screen when I'm shooting. But at least having the bipod in place, it is very stable and makes using the scope cam that much easier. Also, it's almost completely windless this evening. So I'm only really gonna have to worry about hold over and hold under for my shots and not having to aim off from the wind. I mentioned earlier that I've set up not much more than about 25 metres from the hedge. Now, that sounds very close, especially considering I'm using an FAC rated air gun this evening. But the thing is, by being that close in a straight line to the hedge, it gives me nice shots at a comfortable range left and right, probably out to about 40 metres or more each way. So by setting up close in the first place, you give yourself a much wider arc of fire down either side of the hedge.
that one did the classic headshot rabbit cartwheel but it's settled now absolutely stone dead its eyes did look a little bit mucky I'm not sure whether it was a mixy rabbit I'll check it more closely when I pick up but for now I'm gonna sit tight not go stomping up to the bank and hope that one or two more will come out Right, another cartwheel there, but another clean kill. That one was a little bit smaller, probably about half grown, but this is a pest control job and they all count. That one came out quite quickly after the last one. Now, the sun's dipping behind the hill behind me now. It's cast me into shade, but there's still just a nice bit of sun catching that bank. And I think the rabbits are coming out to enjoy that before it finally gets dark. Well, that's the way we like them. It was light straight out for that one. Handily, it was dead on my zero distance, so I also didn't have to mess about giving the shot any hold over or hold under. Dead on with the crosshairs, straight down. Well, we're starting to run out of light now and I want to get those rabbits picked up so we can take a look at them before it gets dark. Now it's only been a relatively short session but that is a great thing about this approach. I haven't had to mess about building a hide, not only wasting time but also causing disturbance. All I've done is turned up and settled into position and the reason that you can get away without having a lot of cover is because I'm laid down absolutely flat to the ground obviously I've got my face covered up but to be perfectly honest with you I wonder if these rabbits would even notice if I hadn't bothered pulling the snood up over my nose now I'm quite relieved that it is a short session because as effective as this method is it's not very comfortable lying down here on your belly so I'm going to get up stretch my legs and we'll take a look at those rabbits One thing that's always worth doing when you pick up, and we don't always point it out, is just squeeze the rabbit at the top of the stomach, run your hand down, and that'll just drain the bladder, whatever's in there. There you go, and that'll just stop that from tainting the meat, and also stop you from tainting the meat, should you be clumsy enough to pierce the bladder when you're paunching your rabbit. Right, let's go and get the others. Right, once again, I'm just squeezing and running my hand down just to drain the bladder to stop that from tainting the meat. Now, this is actually the one that I thought had mucky eyes, but looking at it more closely, it's actually pretty clean. Right, and finally, that small one, which although it's not very big, 
I'm sure that meat will be very, very tender. And taking a close look at the head, you can just you see the sort of accuracy that that bipod affords you. It's shot right through the head, just between the eye and the ear. That rabbit really won't have known what hit it. So, there are three less rabbits out burrowing in the paddocks, which is good news for the horse owners, but I'm also going home with three nice rabbits for the pot. And from what we've seen this evening, there are plenty more left, so we'll be back again another day to have a go at those. An enjoyable evening out after rabbits there. And now, it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News, brought to you by the Airgun Center. Richter Optic distributor John Rothery Wholesale has commissioned a neat new website to showcase the affordable scope range. The site is packed with useful information including technical specs for each scope, the history of the brand and product reviews. It also features high quality product images plus a gallery page where shooters can upload photos of themselves in action with their Richter scope. Check it out at richterscopes.com. Are you planning to get an airgun on FAC? You could be facing a postcode lottery according to new figures which name and shame the firearms licensing authorities that are the slowest of processing applications. Essex was the worst force on record. It issued more than 5,000 Section 7 temporary permits last year. Kent issued 3,000 and Thames Valley 2,500. At the top of the charts, Cleveland and Derbyshire did not issue a single temporary permit, indicating that they processed all their applications on time. The new meeting place for the shooting industry continues to grow. The Gun Quarter, which you'll find at the UK Game Fair at Stoneley this summer, has welcomed two more major gun retailers to its lineup. Premier Guns and John Bradshaw Guns will attend the show, which takes place on the 22nd to the 24th of July. Premier Guns said it would bring around 400 guns, while John Bradshaw told us to expect a host of premium brands. Air gun giants including BSA, Gamo, Umarex and the Shooting Party have already signed up. There's still time to enter our free competition to win a Tracer Leadray F600 lamping kit. This powerful lamp has a 220 lumen beam and shifts between blue, green and red light with just a twist of a collar. It's also equipped with a focusable beam and three levels of illumination. It comes with an adjustable mount, scope tube attachments, anti-spill snoot, stock mounted remote switch, rechargeable battery and mains charger. The competition closes on the 20th of May. Full details can be found on the competition page on the Airgun Shooter website. And finally, the inaugural Northern Shooting Show takes place this weekend at the Yorkshire Event Centre. Big name airgun exhibitors include Air Arms, Armex, Brocock, BSA, Daystate and Gamo. Plus accessories from Clue Light, Tracer, Hawk, MTC Optics, Nightmaster and Nightsight. The show will also feature an HFT Masters course where visitors will be able to talk to key figures from the Masters scene and shoot some targets before the serious competition gets underway on Sunday. That was the Airgun Show News. Affordability doesn't mean that you have to skimp on quality, and the scope we're looking at this week certainly emphasises that point. It's the Hawk Panorama 3 to 9 by 40 AO. This neat little scope has a retail price of just £159.99, yet it boasts some great features without any compromise on the optical front. The 3 to 9 by 40 configuration of this scope helps to keep it compact. It's 310 millimetres long and weighs around 350 grams. It's robustly built though, it's waterproof and shockproof, plus it's nitrogen purged to stop it from fogging up. This scope is made for real field use and it's properly protected against the elements. The Panorama has a one inch mono tube 
and light transmission is exceptionally good despite its relatively small 40mm objective lens. Something that can probably be attributed to the fact that the lenses are multi-coated with 16 layers. It also has a nice wide field of view, something that's a massive help when it comes to fast target acquisition. The rubberized zoom ring adjusts magnification from 3 to 9 times and is very smooth to operate. That gives you just about all the adjustment you need for dawn to dusk air gun hunting. With the higher magnification, well suited to bipod work and the lower end making for a brighter sight picture in poor light. This model is parallax adjustable by means of the collar at the front of the scope. It's knurled for an improved grip and winds right down to just 10 yards. Perfect for close range ratting and feral pigeon control around farm buildings. I really like the low profile windage and elevation turrets, which certainly complement the scope's clean, sleek lines. Screw off the caps to reveal the finger adjustable turrets, which don't require any tools. Each of the positive clicks adjusts the point of aim by one quarter of an inch at 100 yards. Once you've got it zeroed, screw the caps back down to create a watertight seal against the washer which sits beneath. The glass etched floating reticle features dots and ties at half mil dot spacings to provide plenty of aim points without making the sight picture too busy. As a shooter who doesn't like a cluttered sight picture, I really appreciate this reticle configuration and the fast focus eye bell ensures that it stays pin sharp. The reticle can even be illuminated in red or blue, so you can choose the colour that gives the best contrast against your target. You switch it on and control the brightness using the dial on the side of the scope. There are five distinct levels for each colour. The kit includes some useful extras, including an optical cloth and a spare battery for the illuminated reticle. You also get a set of scope covers to keep dust and grime off the lenses during storage and transportation. The Hawk Panorama is a brilliant scope that combines affordability and performance. It produces a bright, sharp sight picture and boasts features including low profile turrets, adjustable parallax and a neat illuminated reticle. It's available in numerous other configurations, including magnification up to 18 times and a 50mm objective lens. But, in all honesty, I reckon this relatively compact version takes some beating. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.